Greetings in the name of the Most High. You didn't get the last um, transmission. I don't know why. It just really, for some reason, was having trouble um, uploading, and it was it was about two hours. Uh, and basically, what it did was to look into the uh, book of Daniel and compare Barack Obama to um, the uh, writing in Daniel 11. Uh, particularly with respect to this. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones. Thus he shall do the most in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and he shall divide the land for gain. And in the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the, no of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall, shall stretch forth his hand upon the countries, the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the measures of gold and of silver, and over the, all the precious things of Egypt, and the the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utter, utterly to take away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Um, also, in an earlier verse, 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt. Well, he will win the, the kingdom by flatteries. Let me just go back now that I've done the conclusion of his end. Then shall he return. Well, I, I'm going to have to back up, I guess. <laughs> then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days he shall be destroyed neither with anger nor in battle. That's, that's not the man we're talking about. But that uh, he shall stir up the power and the courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up in battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed off the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overthrow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts, this is north and, king of the north and south, and watch how this one emerges. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and heart shall be against the holy covenant." And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do, he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. An arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days." Now when they shall fall, they shall holpen with a little help 
but many shall cleave to them with flatteries, and some of them under and some of the under, some of them of understanding shall fall, to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is not yet a time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion, what we just read. And I can see how a lot of people will look at that and say, okay, we are at that time. We are at the time of the end. This is the final kingdom before the everlasting kingdom. This is the great power that's spoken of as a king. And um, this one emerges and actually subdues the king of the north and the king of the south and you know, the world. But then they come against him again. And, um, uh, and he, is, he is not successful in the end. And none there to help him. He, he, he goes out um, abandoned by all. And then in Daniel 12 comes in the everlasting kingdom. So is this a man or is this a um, new world order? I mean, you could look at it like instead of a man, you could say, well, this is the new order that came in after the, the older one. And you can assign the king of the north and the king of the south. Um, you can have Gog and Magog. And all, all those things can be kind of um, figured out to be, you know, the time that we're in. But I'm here to go beyond that because, you see, all the people that have spoken about Daniel in this prophecy and tried to put a timeline to it, uh, you know, they're going to be disappointed because none of it really makes sense. If you look at it as a series of ages that occurs, as someone who, who sent me an email that um, kind of looks at all these as, as ages, in other words, if this the final one is that the New World Order and the, and, the, and the various players include radical Islam and he'll win the kingdom by flatteries and, and uh, in other words, you know, this global New World Order will be a, a, a treaty between all these countries to then persecute and destroy those who have understanding, those who have understanding. Um, but as you can see here in Daniel 11, the new world order really never gets established. War goes on, yes. Persecution of the saints goes on, yes. Sorry, the, these are people that have had, under, these are not tribulation saints that just got Jesus after the quote rapture, no. These are the people of God. And, you know, they, they do great exploits during the time, during the time of the maximum evil and maximum war. Are, this proves my whole point and the, the rima I gave you the other day, that these people are raised up to do exploits, but then they are slain after doing miraculous things. Also ties right in with the two witnesses in Revelation. Um, the 80 million you know, trillion dollar question is, it, and, and then you hear about Egypt and Libya, right, subduing the lands, being able to um, uh, uh, do battle with the, uh, the, the strongholds of Russia and, you know, um, Israel and, and the Middle East and whatnot, and, and, and eventually kind of dominate for a short time. But uh, then, then he is overturned. He meaning they, perhaps. He meaning a kingdom. Is it Barack Hussein Obama, obviously a Muslim, who has uh, worked to bring in the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, so he has a success there, communism in America, and then the rise of Islam to persecute the saints? Uh, is he orchestrating all those things? Yes. Is it consciously being done with, with an eye to prophecy? Yes. Do the people behind the scenes think he's the Messiah, therefore they don't prosecute him for any crime that he may do? Yes. They, in... in I have heard that in some parts of the world they worship Obama. They may not do it here at home, then, but he'll get payback because he'll persecute those who are criticize him. Those who have understanding will be anyone who would criticize him, basically. 
And yes, he will get even with them. Um, because that's what he does. He's, a, he's, he's, he's vengeful in that way. And he has a list of people that he wants to take out, and he has drones from the sky take them and their families and their kids and everybody out, no matter how many, much collateral damage, it, saying the end justifies the means. We've never had a policy like that, but there's no prosecution for the complete, total illegality of this man, which makes me believe that he is supernatural. He is supernatural and the people around him, whether it be the Justice, uh, the latest, um, where um, Justice Roberts went ahead and bowed down to the Messiah Obama and, and found a way to make his law work because nobody will disappoint this man. They may act like they are. And of course, Judge Roberts has now gone down in infamy as the biggest traitor since Benedict Arnold. And even beyond that, he is now labeled in history as a traitor, and one who behind the scenes worked, but that kind of deception that he did, and of course he should never be a justice, and he destroyed the Supreme Court and all the credibility of the Supreme Court forever and ever, amen, world without end. That Supreme Court is now irrelevant forever. Because once you go that way, you know, as Roberts did, once you sell your soul, as Roberts did, the, there, there is no integrity after that. And being that he's the chief justice, that means the court is tainted and there will be no justice now that he's made that move boldly in public eye. My feeling is that o Obama and um, their secret society brothers, and so, you know, they're bowing down to him because they expect him to be the one. Okay? So they're consciously fulfilling this. There's a reason he must go into Egypt and take over. And the Muslim Brotherhood bows down to Obama. You understand that? So, in a sense, he's conquered Egypt and he's conquered Libya. And um, so no one is going to oppose him on the health care thing because it's not about health care. It's about control and a lockdown of the people and then a forcing them to take the chip and enforcing them to... So all those things are there. In fact, Trish was telling me that the chip is in the uh, legislation of the health care bill buried in there somewhere that people will be microchipped, and I'll have to get further verification on that, but um, it doesn't surprise me. So they believe it's the time of the end because they're making all the moves. Uh, the M Muslims believe the Mahdi will come, and he will be the Messiah. And, uh, and, you know, I think Islam being the Antichrist makes even more sense, but is Obama the Mahdi? You see, that really becomes the question. The other thing about this Mahdi, and someone wrote me yesterday saying uh, that he would have an eye that would be put out, would be um, like, a, uh, like a, a spoiled grape, or like a rotten grape, one of, the, uh, one of his eyes. So you would only have one, the one eye, the one good eye. And that's what they're kind of looking for. So does Obama fit the exact characterization and is this prophecy of Daniel pertaining to today? I mean, you could even ask that question and it wouldn't be a stupid question. And the answer is, well, there are six people that say yes and there's six people that say no and all of them are Bible experts. So in the end, the only thing we can get is direct revelation. You know, it is the time of the end of this civilization, yes. Is the Bible talking metaphorically, in a, in a sense? Uh, you know, people think, oh, there'll be a literal return of Jesus, and the, the, these people tend to believe that there's a literal rapture where they actually are just, you know, it's like they, they play out the left behind um, thing on television. And the answer to that, of course, is uh, no, it's, it's a mystery, and it's veiled in a mystery, and nobody, nobody's going to be able to say that. Uh, you can say that, and you can have people hope on it, but um, it's going to remain a mystery as to what happens to people and what the transformation is after death. And um, there are many here who believe they're going to be taken out and who are going to end up remaining and some being slain, you know, for their faith. And they're going to wonder, well, why didn't God, you know, take them out? Why didn't he come for his bride? And I'm, you know, I'm, well, I've tried to be the one voice. I mean, everyone hates me for saying this. But I've tried to be the one voice to say, you know, you're here to go through it. We're going to go through it. And 
there's going to be great miraculous things and a great restoration and you'll be beyond life and death in your vessel. You know, you'll be changed. Just like it says, change in the twinkling of an eye, you will be that. But please don't keep, stop thinking in terms of some kind of rescue operation because you're already rescued. Can you, can I, can I get an amen? No, when I was in church, they all taught the rapture, you know? Now, the Calvary Chapel, they love that. They just go on and on about it, and they, they go through meticulously through the scriptures proving that it's true. And I've, you know, okay, I'll, I, I don't even want to get caught. I didn't want to argue about it because I'm, I'm not here to say no to it if, if it really happened in the way that people think it will, which is hokey and almost like a stupid comic book. Sure, like a, you know, fine, I, I'll go. But that's not it. It's a mystery. Life is a mystery. Love of God is a mystery. Creation is a mystery. The church is a mystery. Jesus Christ, the one, his true identity, which is beyond the name Jesus and beyond the name Christ. He is a mystery. And the Bible is really good at instructing us how to live and, and really good at, um, you know, it, it does have tremendous amounts of fulfilled prophecy all the way from the Old to the New Testament, tying them both together. It is a divine book and it, it is a holographic book, meaning it comes alive when you read it. Uh, but the point is, is that nobody is going to be able to say anything about the mystery that will make sense. I've sat in on the teachings about Daniel. I've studied the, the, the timeline. I've studied, I've heard everybody's, over the last 10, 12 years, I've heard everybody's testimony about what they think it is. And I'm here to say that, well, all you can really say is it's a mystery. None of you will figure it out because it's not a linear thing. The time of the end is all the time. The time of the beginning is all the time. The time of the middle is all the time. Whether you're in this form or another form, it doesn't really matter. I'm here to tell you that the Lord expects you to go through it and you will be raised up to do great exploits. Just think like the, the mystery of the two witnesses. It's a mystery. I've heard it explained a thousand times by everybody, including like people like Dr. Gene Scott and all kinds of people. And nobody has ever nailed that one. Nobody, not one person. To my satisfaction. Oh, don't start sending me all the studies. I know, I've seen them. But nobody, but nobody has ever gotten anywhere beyond a hokey explanation that makes no sense. Because man keeps trying to do things in linear time, but God doesn't exist in linear time. I mean, he does, but he doesn't really. You know, even time itself is, you know, illusory in a way. You know, we've explained that we need the opposites here in order to live. We need maximum good. If there's maximum evil on the planet, there will be people doing exploits of maximum, miraculous, unbelievable good in the sight of men. I don't know about you, but I prayed to loose the heavens and uh, the rain came just like that. I didn't go out and take credit for it. I did it. I loosed it and there was no rain in the forecast for another week. And the heavens opened up and now it's, it's here. And I pray for it to stay loosed. And, uh, and uh, you know, I did not pray for it to, to, to open up during the time when people are all screaming drought because I knew the rains that when they came would be flooding level rains and that could even do more damage in a way. The problem with the forest is the, uh, the EPA is really the one that burned them down. The EPA is responsible for burning the houses down. And the reason why is because they won't let um, a man be a good steward of the forest because like I told you before, they don't want humans even setting foot in any forest. And there's actually legislation um, that people have brought forward. I don't know where it's going to go, but it's been written to make sure that human beings do not set foot on national or state parks. Um, and they're going to use like an emergency or martial law or something like that as a pretext to be able to, to cordon off all state and national parks
from people from any kind of use whatsoever, including hiking. Because that's what they've wanted to do for years and years and years is they believe the human is a disease and they want the humans cordoned off into and managed into, you know, compact, you know, little cities and groups so that they can be, um, you know, used to experiment on and uh, possibly used for genetic uh, manipulation and things like that for scientific uh, research. But they don't want humans of their own free will walking around in a forest. And they don't want humans be uh, understanding that they are part of nature also. And they don't want humans praying. So that's why they, they, they brought in the whole uh, sexual perversion into uh, pre, pre-teens, which is uh, trying to sexualize them into the... Uh, um, you know, to, to anything that would be against, say, the, the Bible or any kind of morality, so they can control these people. That's the whole purpose of getting them perverted early, so that they can then be controlled by the state. That's the whole point. The next step would be to take the process of birth away from the parents and eventually have uh, clones made and eventually, you know, machines and then game over, machines win. I mean, that's kind of where they are in their in their cognition. Um, Satan's laughing at his little slaves that think that way. These would be the leaders of your world because he says, uh, you know, really what's going on is destruction of humanity under the guise of we're doing this for your own good. (laughs) It's amazing how the Lord gives me all these revelations of really what the truth is. And they're very disturbing but then it's also amazing how his hand keeps kind of restraining, but not, it's almost like he's straining and not restraining. Some of the evil gets through, you know, little by little, more and more. But uh, the, you know, as far as being, you know, rounded up and put into concentration camps, I suppose, you know, I know they're just urging, pining, you know, praying daily to be able to do that. You know, to have like, uh, to have a big, you know, a Waco on steroids and gather up all the children of Yahweh and put them into, you know, and have a great bonfire. Um, what they don't understand is, of course, that when they do that, their own destruction is nigh. Complete, total, and forever. The other blatant thing I've noticed about Obama and coming, this ties in, you know, is that more and more the abominations against God are coming into full force. The first gay president the first Muslim president, you know what I mean? Anything against the Bible, it, 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 you know, anything against God's word would be what is being promoted uh, in order to fulfill the prophecy to speak or do great exploits against the Most High. Uh, the raising of taxes, the enslavement of the people, enforced perversions, um, you know, um, Ultimately, when I was a child, they tried to teach the children to automatically service the adults whenever they were told. So they had a whole other meaning of children should be seen and not heard. That, that meant something completely different to these reprobates. And these are the people that became satanic and then got the keys to the world because Satan runs the world. So they're the ones that became the leaders and the wealthy and the well-to-do and the powerful and whatnot. And uh, they trained children. And then the children that are obedient in servicing the adults would be brought up to be leaders in our society. And this has been going on for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, all the way back to Adam and Eve, basically, all the way back to the beginning of creation, if you like. And um, when they discovered this God of forces, this God that, had, that, that uh, um, you know, that, that is not worshipped even in the form of Allah, but this God this force, this, this God of forces to me just really means uh, forces meaning um, the forces, spirits that are over the world. And you, if you look at Washington, D.C., you'll see all these symbols and everything that are there to entice, enhance, and worship the spirits and contact. Like, for example, the Washington Monument, the reflecting pool is a symbolic contacting of the spirits in other realms. Spirits, plural. So they have these strange gods that they worship. And uh, these are the secret societies of which Judge Roberts is a member and Barack Hussein Obama and many in Congress and many in the Senate and many kings and queens and so forth. 
around the world. And so you saw with your own two eyes, and, and people have tried to apologize and say you didn't see that, but what you literally saw was Roberts bowing down to the Satanists and saying, I'm one of you, so I will protect your, your guy Obama here and his legislation because he is my messiah. And, um, you know, I'm not about to let that legislation be thrown out. And I will forsake all my public principles to do it because I'm really beholden. This is who I really am. And this is who the Supreme Court really is. And it proves my point completely. This is who the Congress really is. But this time the president is not like his, fa the, his forefathers, other, i.e. other presidents. He's a new breed entirely. Not only has he spoken great blasphemies, but he's exalted himself above all gods, and above all religion. And there's a great group of very powerful people who actually worship this man, which is why I said he is not a puppet as people thought. People worship him behind the scene. And they want to bring that over it. And so it's on. So I, I, but does that mean this is it? Not necessarily. I'm not saying no either. I'm saying I'm, I'm simply watching. I'm observing. You know, when I compare Daniel here, it doesn't exactly line up with Obama yet, but he, it, it, quite a bit of it does. And if that's true, then it's a very exciting time. Then you... This also, Daniel 11, proves my Rima, 100% backed by scripture, that there's a restoration that takes place among God's people because they will do great exploits and that the world will be so shocked by these exploits that eventually they will have to purge them and try them and to make them white. even to the time of the end, because it is for a time yet appointed. And, um, you know, that's another picture of the, of the Great Tribulation right there and the persecution of the saints. But that what triggers that is this idea that they shall do exploits because they know their God and they'll be strong. They'll be strong. Right now we're weak, yes? Well, the transformation and restoration, restoration, when I say restoration, I mean to what we are in eternity. So the idea of re-anything is probably a false use of the language, restore. It's really a storation. But they shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, as I'm attempting to do here. They shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Yes, because these exploits being supernatural will be so huge and so well reported. And the powers that these people will have, i.e. that they're strong, will be such that it will trigger the wrath of the world to silence them. Like for example, if you went into a, a cancer center and you healed everyone of cancer simply by passing through. Much like at the time of Pentecost, they were made strong, remember? Remember raising the dead? Some people think that's blasphemous. So of course not. Peter raised the dead, you know, Elisha. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's um, you know, Jesus. It's, it's a, it's a uh, tradition. You know, raising the dead proves the existence of God <clears throat> to many people. I mean, once someone's dead, that's it. And then they raise them from the dead. Um, that becomes a, a sign and a witness to the people to give them hope to show that their God is beyond Caesar, their God is beyond Obama, their God is beyond this whole last purge. But to me it looks like what ends up happening at the time of the end, and, and someone could say, yes, but the entire thing that you've read in 11 is already after the tribulation begins. So that these people would be new saints. And I'm here to tell you, no, that's not true. You would have to actually make that up to make the scripture say that. The scripture doesn't say that. These people are here and they've been here. The people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. It doesn't say they're just, um, first of all, well, 
let, let's just leave it for what it says. They do know their God, and they'll do exploits. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll let the experts decide whether that is in the time of tribulation. So therefore, the real, the real hardcore saints are out of here. Again, I don't want to argue about the, the R word. I just, you know, there's so many people dying today all around the world who are not getting rescued. And I just wonder if you feel justified that you should be rescued and, and, and that they shouldn't. Like, like, what if you die on the way? I mean, you know, it's, 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 a, it's useless. Death is to be laughed at. Let's get to the nitty-gritty here. Due to the maximum evil that ramps up on the planet, there will be saints doing, and this is exactly what my book Lamb portrays this perfectly, there will be a ramping up of the saints and a gathering of these people that will do exploits, that, and that tends to frighten them. That frightens the Satanists, you know, and they want to they stop it. Just like the feeling they had about the two witnesses. They want to stop them, but they can't stop them until the appointed time. Right? Okay, but that's their goal. Of all the secret societies, the goal is to bring about their Messiah, who will then be the ruler of the world and, and will be worshipped openly who will chip the population or, you know, put an implant of some kind, an identification, who will put people into great slavery via taxes, who will make it impossible to do trade, to be able to function without, without bowing down to the beast, to finally get everyone cornered in that corner. Those things we haven't seen yet, but the underpinnings of those things are in place. It's amazing to me that these people are in the halls of government that that, you know, people out there have not thrown them out. Let me explain why that is. They can't. Judge Roberts had to approve Obama's thing or he, would, he wouldn't be here right now. His life would have been ruined. So he went along. You know, everyone at the Pentagon goes along. Everyone at the Supreme Court goes along. People keep wanting to put their hope in the Supreme Court and the Pentagon. Those institutions are gone, baby, gone. Those people can't do anything about anything. When Obama says, you go march, go bomb these people with the drones, they go do it. They don't question whether it's legal or not. He is the law. So is he the, 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 the Messiah, the Mahdi, the final one? Well, Islam is not... Um, Accept him as the one. They say the Mahdi is around, but it's not him. So, you know, we're at a kind of a standstill. So I can't say it's him, really, because though I've seen him exalt himself above all gods and all religions and demand that people listen to him, even though he's... The only way he'd have something to say is if he gets completely indwelt by Satan and then starts speaking in another voice that not only hypnotizes people, he already hypnotizes people, but I mean, puts them into an act of submission and worship. And apparently, you know, there are powers there that uh, there are people that are, that are you know, uh, agreeing. And one good example is Justice Roberts, who, who was openly worshiping uh, the beast in the form of Obama with his decision, which would be the decision he made is opposite of what his true heart and his true mission and, and what, what Bush's mission for him was when he appointed him to the Supreme Court, it was, uh, he did the opposite. He took a dive publicly. And I think Donald Trump said it best. He said, look, the guy just wanted to be loved by uh, the establishment and loved by the people. Yeah, there's certainly that. And he said he is loved. He is now revered and loved, and he is the man who made it all happen. If you like, he's the man who took down the United States without a whimper, and nobody said anything. Because the health care law is simply the total control, control grid over the entire population of the world, not just the United States. And so that's power. When, 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 a, when a president can demand that a justice take a dive like that, that's real power. And um, will it manifest to the time of the end or will we be sitting here talking about this in 2020? 
The Daniel people th say it has to be wrapped up by about 2018. So that would mean that we're in the time of tribulation right now as we speak. That around 2000, we've, we entered into it, you know, um, probably at Rosh Hashanah in 2010, 2011, let's say. And then, you know, by 2018, 19, around in there, uh, that should be it. Well, for that to happen, a lot would have to happen in the next year and a half. A lot has happened, but the world would have to be sunk into war. And there would have to be a mandatory, you know, a martial law and, and you know, a, a chipping of people. And there would have to be such a, a power, and the book of Revelation says that this Antichrist would be wounded, and then when he comes back, he'll be like the dragon. He'll, be, he'll have such powers that everyone will fall down and worship him. So, as much as Obama would like to be that guy, and as much as he thinks that you know, he's actually doing good out there when he's you know, pretty much maximum evil, um... It seems a stretch to me, and I'll just say it, it seems right now it's shrouded in a mystery, and I know people want to see the time of the end very badly, but I'm not, I cannot definitively say this is the guy, um, but I believe that many, many secret societies do believe he is the one. And then they can't explain why he's gotten such crap over the last couple, three years. But they are planning vengeance against those who did speak up in that way, which I told you there's no free speech. It all gets counted and all gets stored up. Why would God allow it? Because he's written in his word that maximum evil will ramp up and then it will go into another time of, of Christ, which is the return of Christ where the final kingdom and the forever kingdom will be established, but it's not going to be established out of, you know, the middle. It will be out of the maximum darkness will become maximum light. And that's the way everything in the universe works. It's a mystery. The more evil the world gets, the more miracles God's people do. It was like that at the Roman Empire. It was like that at the time of uh, the Acts of the Apostles. It was, um, you know, it's been like that through the ages. It's like that at the time of David, when he was up against the Philistines and up against Goliath. It's like that time of Daniel, when you know, put in the oven, and you know, you know, when, when you had, uh, um, uh, you know, the lion's den and all the other things that that, that would occur. You know, peaceful Daniel, who was just trying to serve. You know how they would turn on him, or or Jeremiah, how he would be turned on and put in a cage. You know. And one day he's talking to the king, and the next day he's in a cage. Or the other prophets who, one day they have the year of the king, the next day Isaiah is sawed in half. I mean, you know, it goes on and on and on like that. Because the people, they, they don't know what they do. They're out of control. They don't have control over themselves. They don't have control of, they, 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 they are afraid of the truth that there really is a God. There really is a conscious being who is no respecter of persons and who will do his will. They want to do their will. So they think by abolishing the people of God, he would have no real reason to return. So the game to them is get rid of everything there is to do with God and then we can have this planet for ourselves. And of course, all that would mean is that there'd be no reason for God to sustain them because that's the only reason they exist. So therefore, they would cease to exist. And that would be the second death. It's just that simple. There really is a mystery to the entire end time prophecy of the Old and New Testament. And the mystery between the Old and New Testament is the same as the opposites. You know, they're opposite spans of time. One is the time of the end, one is the time of the beginning, and everything else kind of falls in the middle. But there's the beginning and the end in each chapter of the Bible, of all 66 books. And it just is that way. You know, the, 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 the secret societies use the Bible to, because they know that God is real, but they keep thinking that they're going to have a pathway to divine, um, to Godhood, to divinity. Just take the Masons, for example. They believe in the apotheosis. In other words, they believe that um, they will be raised uh, to the level of gods. 
and that they have to you have to be a mason in order to do that. And um, they believe that there's a, a left-handed path or a path of, of, of Lucifer that will guide them into their own apotheosis and they will be, you know, at some point immune to, you know, God's will. And um, that's where you have movies like The Matrix showing how the machines ended up taking over. In other words, humanity was conquered. Um, humanity could not be conquered if people who know God and know his word and are able to glean the word in everything from a comic book, a phone book, the internet, the Bible. The word keeps coming forth and they keep explaining and they keep you know, teaching to people you know, what, what is the solution. And the solution is Jesus Christ, God, Yeshua HaMashiach, God, the true Messiah, God, who's been maligned over the centuries and now is being outright blasphemed in public. This, this is the path to the everlasting kingdom. Every other path leads to destruction. The path of self-actualization or self or personhood leads to uh, narciss narcissistic uh, behavior and delusion and death. The path of apotheosis or the secret societies leads to genetic manipulation, cloning, and uh, the death of humanity and the rise of machines. The aliens are simply machines. A bad cloning experiment. Uh, you know, they, they had time travel all the way back many thousands of years ago. These are the, many of these aliens, that you'd call it space aliens, are simply human beings who try to transform themselves into eternal beings in this timeline with the ability to escape the timeline and run around forward and backwards in time. What they don't understand is that even that is still linear travel. That's still a linear understanding that is still not the mystery. So they became trapped as machines in their own uh, vessels which were incomplete. and are now playing a game of how in the world can we win and, and live and the only way to live is to eliminate humanity. So that's what the aliens are doing here. Meaning they're just beings um, who may have begun as human beings and who wound up looking like that. <laughs> I told you before we're behind in time. All of our lives we've been behind the actual, we're not in the present, we're back in time. The present moment is Christ, so we're back in time and they're trying to prevent us from catching up to the present moment. So they keep manipulating and controlling and trying to block the way of humanity so humanity cannot be free and not, be, and not realize that each person has the potential to be made in not just into a divine being, that's not it really, like not a God, but to be eternal. And to be filled with, you know, God and Godhood in that sense. But that that power that indwells and fills us, call it the Holy Ghost if you like, is the power of creation of the entire, you know, multiverses. That is the ultimate power, only accessible, ironically, through weakness. So we understand this mystery, this subtle mystery, where they still believe they have to be a big brute force and conquer by, by their will. And their will is, of course, a lousy imitator of the will. And so they could never ever, ever be God or create anything as good as God. And everything that they do try to create will only fail in the end. Their governments, their new world order, their wars, their rumors of wars, their Albert Pike books, all these fail. Their Manly P. Halls, their, I'm just, you know, their Madame Blavatsky's, their Tibetan monks, their whatever else they have, their Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf, and, and uh, the, the, the Communist Manifesto, and on and on and on, to their philosophers of Plato and Socrates and uh, Bertrand Russell and you know, I'm 
throwing people in here and there from all kinds of timelines um, to uh, to the empiricists, to to the scientists, to the Pythagoreans, to just about anybody that you want to throw in there. Man's way and all this coming out of the Greek mystery schools to the secret societies, to the bloodline and the elites, to the ancient bloodlines that have been crafted over time to bring forth the, the Mahdi or the Messiah to be. All of it is a pathetic failure. And even before this Messiah gets going, he comes to an end. And the whole world sinks with it. Now, if it were me, I'd just soon put a goddess there, you know, put a woman there. Have a goddess thing going on. It'd make it a lot more interesting. <laughs> but uh, that's not the point. Um, when Obama was being jocular with the military and, and getting rid of don't ask, don't tell, he said, wait a second, wait for it. Um, pretty soon around here, it's going to be, it's raining men. And he made jokes like that. It's like, okay, well, you know, you just have it up. Um, no, I, my problem with um, the way that the gay thing is politicized is it's being done because it's, they believe it's against the Most High God. That There's no other reason, if it was, if it was some other kind of thing, you know, um, man and beast, or, you know, if that was the thing, if that, you know, uh, but like I say, the witchcraft, satanic and all that, uses the backwards, if you will. Uh, they also do backwards speak as well as have um, sodomy as backwards, because in sodomy you can't get a baby. It would be a, ultimately an act of death. Please separate this out from my, any, any thoughts you may have of, well, but I could easily, um, you know, uh, uh, have sex with a guy or with a, you know, it's like, yeah, well, you could have sex with probably any inanimate object as well, especially the rise of these robots we'll be providing. Um, Charles, okay, that doesn't look like it's... So the point I'm trying to make is that it's not really about the fact that you too could want to have sex in whatever capacity and shouldn't it be tolerated? Um, no, that's not the point. The point is to make legal that which was against God's law or whatever. And, um, you know, to go against the Most High God. If it was something else, you know, some other thing, then it would be another thing they'd be promoting. They don't promote the gay agenda for um, uh, population control. I mean, that's part of it. it it's because it when you agree with it, it's like when you agree with Judge Roberts, what he did, and you agree with it, then you become a part of it. And it's a form of traumatization of the people. So yes, um, you can use the gay thing to traumatize people by getting them to go into agreement. Then there's a whole stream of thought and, and spirits that go along with that. Anyway, it's without, I don't want to torture this to death and sound like, you know, make it sound like I'm, I'm trying to separate out the actual desire for lust, which everyone can fall subject to, from the reasoning behind certain public rituals and pushing and pressure. Hence, you know, the idea of the children being, you know, boys being forced to play with dolls and girls being forced to play with guns or whatever it is. All of this opposite opposition has to do with rebellion toward God and establishing their own order, which, as I said, the end would be not just anathema, but the, the God would have no reason to, to sustain it because of the fact that uh, he would have no reason to sustain it. In other words, what they don't real well, it's, I can't talk to them because they don't, they, they just don't want to listen. You need to really raise the, 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 the whole thing um, to another level. I mean, why would there be, um, to get your understanding of the situation, you know, 
uh, America is for freedom, you know, the freedom flows from the creator. So we must get rid of freedom and get rid of this notion that freedom flows from the creator, but from the state. That's, uh, you know, that's the same thing as the gay thing. Uh, all these things are chosen as issues because they directly relate to Yahweh and rebellion against the Most High and blaspheming the Most High. That's the whole point of the whole thing. It doesn't really matter what it is. It could be um, making the wrong widget or something. Uh, the other thing is in architecture, it's all subtle worship of Satan and these different gods and, and these different forms. And basically they, they have people going to and from work completely oblivious to the fact that they're part of a, they're in a temple, like Washington DC is, is one big temple. They're in a temple of worship of the evil one. And they go to work every day traumatized because it's somewhere in their spirit they have to know this. So they go right by the obvious thing every day, you know, to make it obvious and to have people just doing it. And so I think to, to make the, the gay thing the law of the land, in other words, that's what people will be. And then in the end, um, you, you know, but in that world, there's a hierarchy. So when you enter into that world, you have to work your way up and be able, there's an army, a hierarchy, a thing with it that then is um, crafted and uh, brought to power by the dark spirits. Because I, I believe that anybody, like I say, could have sex with anything. So I guess anyone could be gay and anyone could be... Um, but again, that's not the issue, is it? It's a power thing. It's a spiritual thing. And in satanic rituals, um, uh, any kind of ritual that would be um, against the norm would be done in those circles. Now you can have your wife and your children as so long as you understand you're part of a hierarchy and it's all and part of it is sexualized and you will you know bend over when told and as long as you'll do that then you can have a you can be a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm just looking at it in an abstract way, you know. I don't have, I have, know a lot of people who've been gay, if you will. And a lot of people have been, um, you know, and I know lambs who are gay. And check this out. And they would pound on them to get them into this hierarchy. And it just, they didn't, they just bounced off the mirror. You know, no matter how many rituals they put them in, they just couldn't be one of them. You know, that, that, that was what blew my mind about the whole thing. To just show how God, you know, you've got to look at it in a two-tiered reality. Now, I'm sorry it's so confusing, but everything that's happening has a purpose to it, and that is a crafting of the new civilization. All right, continuing right along. It looks like on my thing, my, uh, well, we just don't know if this thing's going to, I paused it and I, you know, I'm continuing, but the, the bars are not there like they were, so we'll, we'll hope they are. So, in the end, the things that you see, the pressure from the rock and roll industry to be PC. Rock and roll is just is a pussy. It's there to make you PC. It's there to tell you conform and submit. So all your rock stars and American Idol and everything else is, and all the lyrics and all the stuff ends up being about you conforming and submitting, but, but they tell you you're rebelling against the old oligarchy and you're being free. The more perverted you are, the more free you are. The more you can get rid of your conscience, the more free you are. And ultimately, well, you know, what they tell people in the secret society is once you start being able to kill without guilt, now you're really getting somewhere. Pretty soon you'll be able to can you'll be a cannibal just like all the top people. And on and on and on. You see, it begins with one rebellion against God. And it continues. Everything they do, everything they say, Everything they think, everything they write is veiled meaning to mean anathema to God in every single sentence, every single act of Congress, every single green thing, every single preservation of the environment, every single thing is to pervert the word of God and to eliminate God's people and to corrupt and pervert people so that they have lost their way, so they are controlled. The healthcare law is anathema to God and it seeks to control. What's it have in it? Forced abortion. 
chipping. Everything the Bible says don't do, it kind of has buried in it to do. I mean, man, that was something when the Supreme Court justice takes a public dive like that and then, and then does all this doublespeak of trying to justify himself, which is just hilarious and ridiculous. We know what he did. Um, it's uh, truly amazing, you know. I just say that Roberts is a Satanist. There's, what, are, what other conclusion can I come to? He's a Luciferian. Period! And he's a disgrace, and he should recuse himself from the court, but of course he won't, because that would be admitting that he did something wrong, which they can't have you do. The thing they have to do is smooth it over so the public goes along. So whatever perversion, they're going to do perversions against the Most High and have the public do nothing and say nothing. And that's the way to engage them and bring them into the process, make them co-conspirators, if you will, because that's what Satan tries to do, to get everyone to through trauma, go along. Oh, you didn't see that. Oh, you didn't hear that. Oh, they didn't say it like that. Oh no, that's not what you saw, right? And more and more trauma, more and more trauma, more until you are completely hypnotized. And the people of God, back to Daniel 11, they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Well, let me go back further. Um, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. In other words, they will be untouched. I knew one guy, and I hope you forgive me for saying, I'm not going to name anyone, but one person that was put, they were trying to get him to the other side, and they literally had, were doing things to him, like rituals for giving him amphetamines or, or coke or something, and having sex with him for like 10, 12 hours at, at a time, sodomizing him for 10 or 12 hours at a time to try to break down his will so he would, to, for his initiation. This, this was a, a gay person, if you will. Um, didn't work. <laughs> so I have, and that story, you know, and I'm really grateful to the brother for telling me that story. That story really gave me a lot of faith because I realized, well, my God, I mean, they couldn't get this guy, and he was right there with them, and right there in the whole milieu. Couldn't get him. They'll throw drugs at you, they'll throw sex at you, they'll do everything they can possibly do to, to get you, that's, that's the initiation. But what it has to happen is something has to happen to you, spiritually, and inside there has to be a death, there has to be something that happens where you pass through from one side to the other. And so they traumatize you, in order they traumatize the entire state in order to get the, all the people to pass through. Finally, out of desperation, they bring the chip in and martial law and the green thing and whatever to, to, to say, okay, maybe, maybe that'll do it. And then finally, in the end, they bring about genocide to, 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 to finally get their way. And then at that point, they collapse because... As soon as they implement that, they have no reason to live themselves, which you would think that as smart as these people are, they all have advanced degrees and also, you would think they could figure that one little thing out. If I were the ruler and I wanted maximum control over the world and sustenance, I would um, support, and this is cynical, and please don't, don't I'm saying this for effect. I would support God's people all the way. In fact, I'd appoint them to my cabinet. Any idea why? Because that would be my insurance. Ever heard the story of Joseph in Pharaoh's court? Same thing. That would be if I was really smart. That's what I would do. If I had wisdom on the matters of the truth. See, these people, they don't care what the truth is. They just don't want it. And they will do the wrong thing and make the mistakes, ensuring their own death, ensuring their own destruction. Because their pride won't let them play the game in a smart way. They want their dictatorship and they want it now. Their spiritual dictatorship and they want it now. 
And in so doing, they cut their own throats. End of story. Forever Kingdom comes in. Game over. It's the eighth, uh, the eighth inning. Jesus comes in. Game over. Establishment of the Forever Kingdom. And those who went along with the other thing are into, uh, as it says in Daniel 12, they are reborn, resurrected into everlasting contempt, knowing consciously that they are separate from God in the kingdom forever and can do nothing of their own. They are, their fate is sealed. And they're not even getting a reservation to live on. You know, they have to be there, you know, in the spiritual realm, witnessing the love, the joy, the peace, the hope of God and the fact that they're not part of it. Those who are the, the, the people that uh, hung true against all this social pressure and global pressure and peer pressure and pressure at school and pressure at the job and pressure everywhere to become one of them, they will be resurrected to everlasting that, well, as Daniel says, they'll be like the stars in the firmament. They'll be forever glowing, forever flowing, forever, they're multidimensional. They can be everywhere at once and nowhere at all. That's the power that the, ironically, that the dark side seeks that power, power freely given by Yahweh to his own children to be um, one in Christ, in God, in Yahweh, in creator, and to be creative beings who are eternal and conscious like the stars in the firmament, glowing brightly. With full autonomy. Because there is, I mean, that's a, you know, full autonomy meaning um, fulfilling their heart's dreams and wishes and desires or whatever, whenever, however. It's a total blessing is what I mean. Because God wants to give that to his people. He wants to give them this total blessing. He's saying right now to the children, you know, you're all suffering so much. You're all suffering so much, you people. You're waiting for something that hasn't happened. You're wanting something that hasn't come in yet. You're needing something that you don't have. You're pining for something that you're not being given. You're struggling for something, but it's just out of reach. The Lord is saying to you now, stop, you, ha you already have. Count your blessings. You are eternal beings. You were set free by Jesus Christ. You live eternally. You shine like the stars in the heavens. You sing with one voice, with one song. You're all related. Your family is all around you. Your loved ones are all around you. You have everything anyone would ever want or desire ever. But it's veiled to you because... It's not the appointed time yet for you to come into realization or consciousness of all these things. Through faith, you understand that you have them and you're shown by the Spirit and by this, this broadcast, this transmission, you have them. You feel it that you have them. I tell you, that two witnesses type of restoration uh, or I'll just say empowerment. That's going to be something. Yeah, they're not going to like that. You walk around on your own recognizance and do whatever you feel like doing on the planet, all the works that God wants you to do, you do easily through your uh, constant prayer and constant will that flows through you. And, and they, and they uh, are horrified that you would pray for the rain to be loosed and then it's loosed or you pray for a healing and then it comes and it's just about anything, you know, it's just instant, bang, bang, bang like that. And they're going, oh, that's gotta be stopped. <laughs> they want you fearful and in bondage and wanting to be rescued, but it's not coming like you're in prison, you know, waiting for your acquittal, waiting for the, for the, for the, for, for the, uh, judge's order that doesn't come to set you free. And I'm like, well, what happened to, to you know, we're free in Christ. We're more than conquerors of Christ Jesus. We, he, he's strong. All the principles of the Bible, all the promises we have already. Um, 
I'm not going to get into the 501c3 church because I've, I've been there and done that and, and we've gone over that to death, okay? So that's, you know, um, that's Babylon, you know, and that's like the, 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 the saints of the Lord are going to be expected to come out of those strongholds and there's nothing I can do about it. I didn't make it like that. If it were up to me, I would have had the churches be true blue. I wouldn't have had to be like that. I would have wanted a pl I'd love a place to go worship and hang out, but... You know, uh, I can go there as a guest, but if I start talking like this, oh my gosh, you know, they're going to get real mad real fast and tell you to shut up. Because they too, like government institutions and whatnot, that many of these people are beholden to the secret societies. And that's, that's you know, call them the special interests, if you will, but everybody's tethered to that. And so, you know, all the institutions of the earth... Just like when Satan showed Jesus, he said, you could have all these, all these kingdoms can be yours. All these guilds, churches, science labs, whatever. Everything can be yours if you just bow down to me. I have the power to grant you all of it and authority and control over it all. But you must bow down to me or it will be against you. The answer to that is, as soon as, as Satan has maximum agreement to where there is ensured mass death in the spirit, at that point he will betray everyone he promised stuff to and he would have betrayed Jesus too. He said, well, I lied. Did I say I was going to give you all the kingdoms of the earth if you just bowed down? <laughs> Did I say you were going to be a forever rock star? <laughs> Did I say you'd be a forever athlete? ha. <laughs> You had your moment in the sun, now die on cue, man. You feel me, baby? He got it. Just hitting the big reset button in your spirit. You know, you all right? Yes? Win-win? You can't lose. You're on the right side of all of it. You cannot lose. So rejoice, okay? Be exceedingly glad because your Lord watches over every step. You can look up for your redemption draweth nigh, meaning, you know, you have it. You're redeemed. And when you're redeemed, what happens? You become children of the Most High God. You know, you have the power to become children of the Most High God. You were made, at that moment, sons and daughters of the Most High God. You were no longer of the flesh, but of the Spirit, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, sons of God. You are no longer what you were through your DNA and flesh, but you are now transformed from a mere flesh creature to eternal children of the Most High God. You are sons of the Most High God. The world is not that. You are. That's a huge distinction. That means you are transcending this entire cycle of life, birth, suffering, and death. You're already there. You're sons and daughters of the Most High. Uh, it would be great if the whole world would get that and, and live. But, you know, the Lord has it. And, you know, the Lord will not lose any of his own. And there are those who will, you know, uh, just not get it or, or resist it because they don't want the, uh, to raise the ire of society of the world, of the establishment, against them. They will do what Judge Roberts did. They will, they will corrupt themselves as he, he corrupted. That was the ultimate, look, Roberts was the ultimate satanic ritual. He went to a higher level in the hierarchy. He corrupted himself before men, before, before the entire world. He did what you know, that's their classic ritual, to corrupt yourself in front of them. And then now they boosted him into, he's invited to all the parties and all the stuff, and he's, 
he's got all the doors open for him and the world is his oyster and uh, you know, but, but you can't ever trust him to teach the law or go by the law and, and no one will ever have faith in him again. I mean, the people that mattered, the, 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 the unwashed, well, they don't, they don't, they don't get it and they don't get any, anything that happens in the news. They don't, they don't understand the significance of it. Well, you want to know if this is the time, may I tell you? There is no such thing as this is the time. It's a mystery, veiled in a mystery. You are a mystery, I am a mystery, it is a mystery, and it's a paradox, and it will be that way indefinitely. Thank you. You gotta learn to flow in those opposites and flow in that paradox. You, the answer to the mystery is the unanswering of the paradox. It, in not answering, you've answered. In not having to, to stick God in linear time or in a box, hello, how about your shoe box? You wanna put God in your shoe box and carry him around with you? That's exactly what it is when you try to siphon all this into linear time. It's not going to happen. And that's why among the body of Christ, there's everyone keeps trying to be linear and clear. And they do a very good job, but they don't pull it off because every generation feels that they're at the time of the end and then it doesn't happen the way that they're told and then they lose their faith, some of them, and others repent and they, they realize that I just got to go, ah, oh, Ah, yeah, that's all I can do. And with that, I bet you shalom, shalom. Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Report, over and out.